John, so if this strike happens, it's going to be the first major one by the ILA since I think 1970, 1977. So what sort of volumes are we talking about being held up each day or each week if all of these East Coast and Gulf Coast container ports uh, are closed? Because we're, we're talking more than half America's container terminals being shut off, aren't we? And are there any lessons from history that will help us understand how this might impact U.S. freight systems and international supply chains? Well, yeah, first, to start off with the numbers, it'd be, be a very big deal. Um, it's much bigger than the West Coast uh, to kind of put it into perspective, you're you're talking about 59,000 TUs a day, the equivalent of um, 411,000 TUs a, a week going over those ports. Um, and you can extend what that means in value to something like uh, 3.1 billion a day of commerce and 22 billion a week. So it's a big deal. And uh, if you have a coastwide strike, um, it'll it'll quite frankly be bigger than anything that uh, we contemplated on the West Coast, both in terms of the volume and kind of the uh, diversity of, uh, of lanes that are involved. Um, it's been a long time. The ILA traditionally has not been the one that has uh, striked. It was the ILWU that was more active. Um, you have to go back uh, 22 years to the actual last actual strike by the ILWU on the West Coast. And that was 10 days, and it um, ended with the, the Taft-Hartley Act uh, being put in place, as I recall, by President Bush. But that was a mess. Uh, unfortunately, this is looking like it could be a, be a bigger mess. Not only is there more volume, but there's also much more kind of um, outbound loads relative to the inbound. And those all translate into jobs. Um, you also have uh, a much broader diversity of freight lanes that are involved. When you have a situation involving the West Coast, it involves lots of freight lanes, but it's primarily focused on Asia. And, and it was a fairly easy alternative. And we saw people kind of doing coastal switching to move freight by water to the East Coast. And if that freight was uh, destined to end up on the East Coast or even the Midwest, that would often be a less costly way of doing it anyway. It, you wouldn't be as quick. You don't have that uh, kind of easy alternative uh, here. First, and you also are involving a, a lot more trade lanes. Uh, this would involve a ma major transatlantic uh, trade lane, trade involving uh, South America and the Middle East. So all of that kind of comes together to make this um, a much bigger deal uh, and, and a much bigger deal for the U.S. And, and with that, it would become a global problem. If you take all of those ports and the container business they do, by my calculations, you're looking at 16% uh, of the container miles in the world. So it's a, it's a big deal.